In this video, I'm going to be going over building a mobile application in React Native versus Flutter versus natively with Swift or Kotlin. I'm not going to be giving some passionate like monologue about which framework has the most logical, has the best implementation, these really nitty gritty technical details, because quite frankly, I don't think that they matter that much. Because in my opinion, you can learn any new language, you can learn any new framework eventually with enough practice. You may not like it a lot, but you can use it to build any type of application. So in my opinion, that is an implementation detail that's not that important. So don't think I'm going to go talking about how much I love TypeScript and how I think it's the greatest language in the world. I don't care about that. We're going to be talking about the other parts of the developer experience outside of the syntax and outside of the framework. So the very first thing that I want to talk about in terms of this whole app development ecosystem is performance. And by performance, I mean, how well does the app run on a device? Technically speaking, you're going to get the best performance with native development. So Swift for iOS or Kotlin for Android you can't beat it. They're going to provide the smoothest, most buttery experience you can imagine. But next up after that, is going to be Flutter. And the reason for that is because Flutter is actually compiled into machine code and Flutter has a dedicated graphic rendering engine called Skia that makes sure everything runs super smooth, super buttery. And the least performant of these three frameworks is going to be React Native. And the reason for that is because React Native doesn't compile into very specific and machine readable code. And instead it's more of a wrapper around the native mobile development platforms of Android and iOS. React Native uses this JavaScript bridge to translate JavaScript into to what would be iOS or Android code down below under the hood. And because React Native acts as a wrapper, it'll lead to the worst performance out of the three. But you have to ask yourself, how important is performance really? Does it really matter that much? Because if you look at some of the apps that are built using React Native, you can see a lot of really big name companies that are using React Native to build their apps. Stuff like Discord, Coinbase, Tesla, Mercari, even parts of the Facebook app use React Native to build their apps. And I've personally never thought that they were super slow. Honestly, as a small developer team, you're probably better off you learning Flutter or React Native to build your mobile applications because they let you build applications for both iOS and Android at the same time. Whereas if you wanted to write everything natively, you have to then build a separate app using Kotlin for Android and then a separate app for Swift using iOS. And while you may get the best performance, is that engineering overhead really worth it? And that's really only something that you can answer because everything is different on a case by case basis. The second thing I want to talk about when considering what platform to use to build your mobile applications is community support. Because look, you're going to run into some bugs, you're going to want to use some third party packages. And those two things only come with really strong community support. And I will say at least anecdotally, this is not something that I'm like getting numbers for and like pulling all the GitHub repo data. But I have found building apps using all three of these platforms is the fact that you will always get the best community support building with native languages, either Swift or Kotlin or React Native. I have found in my experience for Flutter to not have as much community support as React Native or the native languages as well. And I think it's just because Flutter hasn't really gained as much mainstream popularity as the other two frameworks. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely growing in popularity a lot. But I have found that when I run into some issue and I looked up like Stack Overflow or GitHub issues, sometimes I don't really find anyone else that's run into it because it's just not as popular. Or if I'm trying to use a third party provider, oftentimes I find like a lot of these third party plugins or applications that I want to integrate into my application, they always have native support and React Native support, but it's often hit or miss whether or not Flutter is supported. But the only exception to that rule of Flutter not always having developer support for third party packages is if you are going to be developing using Google products. Whenever you're using some type of Google based software product like Firebase, for example, Flutter is almost always supported because Flutter is owned by Google. So it's treated as a first class citizen. So that's something you want to keep in mind. If you have certain libraries or certain functionalities you have in mind that you want to use in your application, you might want to do a little bit of research beforehand to see do they have Flutter support support or not. An example that I personally run into when building my most recent app, which is an app called Todoi, which is a to do list app where instead of checking off the task, you actually take a picture to complete that task instead. And you can also follow your friends to see what tasks that they're completing as well, which by the way, if you want to download it, I'll include a link to it down below in the description. But the issue that I ran into when building Todoi, which is built on top of Flutter is I wanted to use this tool called Post Hog. It is a products analytics tool, which lets me track events, do feature flags, A-B tests. Post Hog does not have an official Flutter library that they themselves support and created. They have a community library, which is good enough to a certain extent, but it's just not officially supported by the post hoc team. And as a result, there are certain features that the community library does not have that the official libraries do. So once again, do a little bit of pre research into certain tools that you're looking for to make sure that they support Flutter or that there is some type of community library support as well. All right. So that is, in my opinion, the two most important things that you want to consider when figuring out what technology you want to use to build your mobile applications. In the end, I really don't think it matters 
matters that much because in my opinion, you can learn any language or any framework relatively quickly as long as you get enough practice under your belt. And what's really more important when figuring out what stack that you want to use to build your application is the performance aspect of it, as well as the community support as well. Let me know in the comments down below which framework you like to use when building out your mobile applications. Once again, thanks for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one.